Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Just letting it go real quick. Yeah, you oh, there we go. Okay. Welcome, everyone. This is our live at five. Um, so we are. Is yeah, our live at five. Hey, everybody. Yes. God welcome, bless you. welcome. Aloha. Blessings, Brother Joey. Yes, blessings. Good to see you. Good to see you. Can you hear us okay? Is everything uh, coming through good? Mr. Nina, good to see you, my dear. Good afternoon, Brother Brian. God bless you. God bless you guys. All right, we're going to just wait for just a few seconds. Like it's um, I don't know if you see the glitch. I hope you don't see the glitch. Are you guys seeing any glitch? And is the volume coming through okay? Man, we're gonna make sure everything's working. Yeah. We've been having sounds. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right. All right. Does it look like God it's bless good? you, and T yeah, Renee? Good to see you on here, guys. Hello, hello. Sister Tara, hi, my dear. Oh, okay. God bless you. Yeah, Other day, right. show, God bless you. Welcome, welcome. My yeah, niece is... and nephew on here. Brandy and, Brandy and Irvin, God bless you guys. God Hi, sweetheart. You. Welcome. All right, guys. We want you guys to share this live page. For the, for the Kepa, good to see you, my dear. Yes. Thank you so much. Welcome. We want you to share this live page. Um, it's today. I don't know if you have seen Sunday's Power for Service, but we're going to be talking All about right, this presence of God today. So it's, uh, we're going to continue in prayer, but this is part of it. Yes. And when you just get closer to God and when you, um, um, Sister Kel, God bless you, my dear. When you get closer to God and when you uh, begin to have a prayer life, the presence of God is there. So um, we're going to be talking about that today. Yes. Um, so if you can tag someone, share this live page. We're going to wait for a few more seconds for it to go, get to a certain number and then we're going to go ahead and start. Um, but we are so, so thankful for this opportunity to um, just be with you on the live. We're also gonna pray for those that is needing prayer on our FIA war room. As the Lord had spoken to me last week to create this FIA war room page. Um, it is a group page, it is on uh, Facebook. Um, if you have any needs or if you need prayer or someone else that you know need prayer, this is where we come together and we pray. And also, we'll come together and pray, um, uh, you know, on, on our, in our daily prayers for you. But we're going to lift this, these needs um, to heaven before we start. So we're going to we want you to share this live page. And we're going to wait for a few seconds. Thank you, Sister Kel. God bless you too, my dear. We're going to share. Uh, go ahead and share this page. And um, while we do that, I want us to... I'm uh, just going to put on some worship music real quick um, just to get into the presence, yes. uh, change the atmosphere. And uh, for those of you who knows me, knows that the atmosphere around you is extremely vital for the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And so we want you to um, get into the presence of God. And so we're going to just put on some, some worship music and... Uh, we're going to um, be starting in just a few seconds. Hang tight. Wait with us. Tell each other hi. Um, God bless every one of you. So we're just going to put on this worship music. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nina, for putting that up for me. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we bless you, Father. We thank you so much, Father God. We praise you, Father. We bless you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Share and tag this page to your friends. Thank you, Father God, Lord. We thank you, Father. We're going to be starting just shortly. A few more seconds. Just a few, few more. few more. Just hang tight. I'm caught up in this holy. 
Just tag this page. No, I'm not here for the message. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. If that's your prayer this uh, this night. This evening, I want you to say, Father, I just want you. Just say it. Father, I just want you. I just want you. Through the motions, I'm sorry. And I just sing another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Just take this few seconds and just to give God I love all things and praise to our Father. You're going to love this message today. God bless you, Sister Carmen. God bless every one of you that is coming on. But Elder Chuck, it's good to see you. Take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. Yes, God. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Yes, my God. Thank you, Father. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. How many of you know that there's nothing else? Nothing else, nothing else. Come on, you say, nothing else. Yes, God, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, yes, my God. Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Come on, you declare. Nothing else. You declare. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. How many of you, that's your prayer? Nothing else that you just want the presence of God and that you just need the presence of God in your life. Um, forgive me for not wearing no uh, makeup today, but I am just going to be plain Jane. And um, we're going to have church today. Amen. And uh, we're going to allow the spirit of God to speak to us today. And we are just so grateful for his presence. Um, before we do, I want to lift up some... Uh, prayer requests for those that is on the FIA war room as the Lord has given me the vision to open up a war room in FIA. It's called FIA war room. And, and what it is, is it's where people can go and give their prayer requests and, uh, and people can go and, and uh, share and, and, and pray for other people and intercede for other people. And this is what the body of Christ is all about. We're about working together for, one God. Amen. And so I want to lift up these prayer requests. 
um, yes. for those that is on the prayer room. I will be going on the prayer room and I will be lifting up the prayer request on live on our faith FIA war room page. If you did not get the, uh, the join button, please let us know here on the bottom and pastor Nina will um, join you to our FIA live page. And if, in fact, if she can post it on there, that'll be great. But we're here to pray and intercede for the people. Yes. Um, I want to lift up Irv Silva. He said to pray for my family in Kauai. My cousin, Lorene, just passed away yesterday. So in the name of Jesus, we pray for Jesus. peace and comfort, yes, Father. Lord. Father, we know, Father God, that yes. many times during death, Father God, when there is death, Father, physical death, that there is much pain and much confusion, Father. And Lord, Father God, Lord, I pray that you will protect this family and that you will cover this family with your peace that surpasses all of our understanding, Father God, that you will answer them, that you will clothe them with your love and that you'll clothe them, Father God, with your precious blood. Father God, that they will know that, that you are God, Father God. So Lord, I pray, Father God, that you protect this precious family, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord Jesus, we are declaring, Father God, for these prayer requests, for healing in their body, Father God, in the name of Jesus, healing in their mind, Father God, Father God, healing, Father God, yes, Father. Father God, there's people on this live page, on this page, Father God, that, that their family members or someone that they love or someone that they know has been admitted to the hospital, God. We don't understand what is going on, but Lord, you are God yes, and you, are. you know all things, Father God. You've created yes, all things, Father. You know us from the inside out, Father God. And Father God, Lord, I am praying and declaring, we are declaring right now in the name of Jesus that you will bring your healing virtue upon your children, Father. Father, for as we know, Father God, that these are the days of revival. These are the days of the end time revival, Father. And we are declaring, Father God, your healing virtue upon every man and woman, Father God, that is in need right now, Father, whether they're in, they're in the hospital or whether they're not in the hospital and they're dealing with some type of pain and disease, Father. We rebuke and we come against every disease, every demonic curse, every generational curse off of you right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, Lord, we are declaring, Father God, wholeness and fullness, God, yes, God. that your people will know that you are God and all yes, by yourself, God. God. So, Lord Jesus, we pray a covering, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We're declaring a covering right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. Yes, Father. And Father God, Lord, we are praying, Father God, that this lie, Father God, will go through. Yes, this God, this lie will go forth in the name of Jesus. And Father God, Lord, that you, Father, yes, Father. that you will reign, Father God. You will reign, Father God, Lord. Father God, Lord, I thank you, Father God, for who you are, Father. I thank you, Father God, that you are God, Lord. I thank you in the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, as we are seeing, Father God, that there is a trouble on this live feed. Yes, Father. Father God, Lord, I pray that you make way right now in the name of Jesus. If you see us on the live, I want you to please post that you see us on the live. Please post if you see us on the live. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Can you guys hear us? Can you everybody hear us? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Okay, you see us, you guys see us, and we don't see us as ourselves. So we're going to wait for just a few seconds. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father God, we pray that this will come back on Father God, this video that we'll be able to see ourselves, God, as we don't see us at all, Father God, that you, Father, will open doors right now. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Father God. You're clear. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. You know what? We don't see ourselves, but we're going to go ahead and speak to you. If you can't see us, please go ahead and post it up, but we can't see anything, but that's okay. Our God is greater and our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Father God, we thank you, Father, for this live. We thank you for every person that is on here. Yes, Lord, we ask, Father God, that you touch every heart, every spirit, every soul on this page, Father God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you will touch, Lord, every family member, every home, Father God. 
every body, Father God, in the name of Jesus, yes, Father. And Lord, may your word go forth in the name of Jesus. May your word go forth like never before, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I don't know what's happening, but on our side, we cannot see anything. Um, it's saying that we're have, they're having trouble playing this video. So if you can hear us, that is great. We're going to continue, and you will be blessed today by this live. Um, we are going to continue in talking about prayer, but this prayer is going to be talking more so on the power of prayer or the power of his presence. And so I want to, um, it was so amazing this past Sunday. Um, if you haven't watched our live here on Faith in Action, it's it's going to be, get ready for it. Buckle your seatbelt because you're going to be moving in the presence of God. And the, the amazing part about God is that, um, the amazing part about God is that he's always, as I keep on saying, that he is always speaking and he's always He's always speaking to each and every one of us. And so I am so glad to, to just be part of the, this unshakable kingdom because we serve an unshakable king. Amen. Oh, so yeah. we serve an unshakable king that will never, ever, ever go away and that will never, no one can stop him and change. he will never change. And this is the amazing part. This is the amazing part of our God is that he will never change. So saying all that to say this, uh, we, this past Sunday was amazing. And if you've seen it on the live, I want you to post on here what you felt. Because I'm going to tell you something about the presence of the Almighty God. The power of God is so evident. The power of God is so um, strong. And, and he, his fire pierces through every heart of man. And we want to talk about today uh, two different things that happens when it comes to the presence of God. There's two things that happens. Um, and I'm not going to talk about the second one first. We want to go into the first one first. Okay. Um, but I want you to, I, I want to just say this. On this past Sunday, the power of God came so strong. And as FIA knows how the power of God um, is in our church. Uh, they know how the power of God comes to, to uh, deliver. The power of God comes to heal. Yes. The power of God comes to, um, comes to uh, break chains. The power of God um, uh, answers you. The power of God uh, repairs. The power of God restores. And what happened on Sunday was more of the power of his power presence and this is the thing that is so amazing to us is this past Sunday um, the power of God was so strong and as many of you know on top of here that there is a first time ever I have ever ever seen angels I've heard people talk about how they have seen angels we've had a woman come into our service uh, come into our church we didn't even have any service but we, she came into our church because she wanted to talk with us and she fell on her knee. I mean, she fell on her back and looking straight up like this because why? She said she's seen big, huge angels in our sanctuary on four corners of the sanctuary, keeping watch um, and watching the people of God and, and taking care of us and protecting. That was what there was, she said. They were protecting faith in action. And this was the amazing part about it was that I have never seen angels. I've heard it. I have been in the presence of God. I've, I've been in the power of God. I know what healing looks like. I know what deliverance looks like. I know what Satan looks like. I know when, when he comes and tries to tamper with the children of God. I know what that person, I, I know what the Satan, um, the enemy behind that person looks like. I know exactly. And I'm telling you this, I have never seen angels except on Sunday. And when I did, and I remember talking about how we need to remember who, uh, I, 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 who, who is he to you? I, I don't remember what I was saying, but I said something like, who is he, he to you? And I tell you this, while I was speaking, immediately I seen a mass amount of angels 
And, and can you do me a favor? Can you get my pink um, clipboard real quick? Because I, I, I drew it real quick. I seen a mass amount of angels uh, uh, right in front of me. And it, it, uh, if, if you know how our church looks like, um, there's chairs and well, we moved all the chairs and these massive angels was right in front of me, but they were standing side by side together. And it's like they were in formation. There was, they looked like an army. And I tell you this, I did not see eyes. I seen, I seen the figure of the faces uh, or, or of their head. Um, but I tell you, they were male. Um, all of them was men, um, but their 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 bodies. I seen their body. Their body was masculine. It was like they were uh, fit for the job. Should I say fit for um, fit for battle? And but this is the thing that was amazing. Their wings was so strong, and I've seen wings. Um, Can you guys see me? Something went off. Tell me if you guys can see me. In the name of Jesus. Just say if you guys can see me real quick. Okay, can you guys see me? Just say I can see you. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, and so... The wings was so strong, people. I'm telling you this. God's word is alive, okay? And, and God will do anything what he feels that he wants to do. Right. These angels' wings were so thick. It wasn't like those that you see on top of the movie, in the movies, where the, 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 the feathers were so thin. It was like uh, you're able to break the feathers or or the feathers like when you see in birds and you it open it fragile. up. It right. was not fragile at all. The, the wings was from here. And thank you so much, everybody. The wings was from here and it was masculine. And the wings came out like this, like exactly this picture that I drew. I don't know if you see it right here. But it's, it's exactly this picture that I drew and it was masculine. And I tell you this, uh, when, when I seen this, um, there you go. I'm going to let you see it right now. Here you go. When I seen it, well, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is what it looked like. It was masculine and it came from on top of here and it started, built, it was like bulgy and it was on. They did not have any arms. I did not, I did not see any arms. I mean, I, I, let me just say it that way. I did not see any arms and uh, they, they were masculine and they were coming out like this. But the amazing part about it is that they were side by side together. So if you see this, this is one. If you see this, this is two. If you see this, this is three. They were not separated, but they were together. If you see this, this is four. They were all the same height. They weren't different heights. They were all the same height. And then when you added more in the back, this is how they looked like. And then when you added more, put your fingers in the back. Put your here, please. When you added more to the back, this is how they looked like. And then when you added more to the back, this is how they looked like. And they looked like this. And the amazing part about it is that it stretched all across of our uh, two sides of the sanctuary. i tell you this. This is exactly how it looked like. If you see this, this letter F in the middle, that is our media. I want to show you real quick as to how it, how it looks like. And this is exactly how it looks like. And I tell you this, people of God, God is speaking and God is moving. You see these parts over here? This is the angels. They were in multitudes. They were in multitudes. They were standing in formation. And I tell you, I... I could not, for the life of me, I could not breathe. I felt like I was about to pass. I, I felt like I was about to drop to the floor. Yeah. And I'm telling you this, all of a sudden, I seen the glory cloud of God. And I want you to go back there and look at it because I reviewed it again yesterday. 
but I seen the glory cloud of God. I've seen the glory cloud of God before, but it was like, it looked like a mist. This looked like a cloud. It looked like a, 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 a fog that, you know, when you're walking in a fog and you're not able to see what's in front of you, that's what it looks like. The glory cloud of God was saturating the entire sanctuary. And as you can see in the glory cloud, uh, with the glory cloud of, uh, of God, if you can give me my, 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 my battery real quick. As you can see with the glory cloud of God, what had happened, what had happened was um, um, I could not, I could not stand anymore. My body was, I, 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 I tell you this, my body, I, I, again, I thought I was, I thought I was going to pass. I thought I was going to drop. I thought I was going to, my body became numb from the, from the bottom of my feet all the way up to my head. My body became numb. And then if you was hearing me, I said, I hear you, God. But then there was a moment that I put my hand in front of my face and I put my hand and I closed my eyes and I could not look at the glory cloud because the glory cloud cloud was saturated and the glory cloud was was so uh oh the heaviness of the the oh the beautiful heaviness of the presence of God was so strong that it saturated the entire sanctuary and you know what the amazing part about it is within that time I'm telling pastor or oh, actually right before that I'm telling Pastor Jemry to come. It's awesome that the Lord told you to come before the army yeah, because you were standing right there where they were at. And the, and, the, and, and so Pastor Jem was in the back on the right hand side. Uh, as you can see in this again, he was on this side and he was standing in the back. Uh, and I, I, I called Pastor Jem and I told him to, I said, I, uh, Pastor Jem, if you can come up to the altar. And I tell you this, he could not move. He could not move. And everybody that's in there is looking at him like Pastor, Pastor Cassie is calling you. He could not move. He stood there on the chair, standing up, and his face was this, looking down, and his, his eyes was closed, and he could not move. He did not budge. Why? Because the glory was already there. The presence of God was already, oh my God, thank you, God. The presence of God was already there, but he was about to manifest himself in a few minutes. And that's exactly what had happened. He manifested himself. And when Pastor Jem started coming up, he said, and many of you can see it on the live, watch it on the live, you'll see it. He had a hard time walking. He could not walk. He had a hard time. If I didn't call him up, he probably would have just stood there, and uh, he probably would have, he probably would have just stood there. But the Lord gave me His name, and He said, "Call him up to the altar," and that is a reason why, because God was about to manifest His presence through uh, this glory cloud and His glory, the Shekinah glory that fills the place that people cannot stand on their knees or people cannot. Uh, 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 look at him face to face, but they'll bow down to him and, and, and say, Lord, you are holy and Lord, you are God and Lord, you are righteous and Lord, you are sovereign and, and, and they cannot lift their head up to the father because the glory cloud is saturated and it's so powerful. And it can, there's so many people in the Bible that when the glory of God had came and into their presence, they fell flat as dead. They couldn't stand in the presence of the almighty God. And that is exactly what had happened. Listen, we serve a living God that is alive and he's showing his people in these days and in these last few hours, he's showing his people exactly who he is. Yeah. And you know what the amazing part about that? Pastor, go ahead and share what was happening when I called you up. What was God doing? What What did you feel? Go ahead and share. Well, already I can feel when the Lord when the <laughs> Lord uh, stepped in into the building, and, and we we use these we use these uh, words to to try to describe uh, describe God. But God's presence literally became so heavy in that place. It, it was it, it was it was like um, 
I, 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 I couldn't, my body was trembling. Um, and, and to the point where I couldn't stay standing, I had to get down on my knees and I was leaning, leaning on top of the, the, the pews that we had back there. And, and literally, um, I remember there was like a tongue of fire that came out of my mouth at the same time when it hit you as well. And, and, and it was just, it was just amazing because the Lord, um, I, we already knew that, 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 um, I wasn't going to be ministering that morning and, uh, and that God was going to do something amazing that uh, well, what we got to realize and recognize is that we are in, um, we're living in prophetic times. This is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, you're in a prophetic time. This isn't a normal time or normal season. You are in the season of the prophetic. I and mean, he is going to start operating prophetically. The voice of the prophet must be heard because it is a direct line from him. He has to be heard. And the ears of people are more attentive in these seasons because of what's going on in our lives today and literally as i was i was praying and pastor cassie you were calling people up to the altar um literally my body was trembling and I'm, my, the weight that was on me i i, I can't ex express it except for being totally like totally uh without strength yes. if i can if i can say like like i was completely weak and and literally when when you call me up i was like oh god i can't even move this is what I felt like. I felt like if I moved wrong, it's like the presence of God was so strong in that place. I felt like if I will, if I moved or if I if I did something in my own power, my own strength, I would have dead, fell over dead. I I I I've heard people talk about this before, and you have to understand what we're trying to say. We're not making this up. I want you to guys to understand. Like I've heard people talk about this. I've read many times on 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 different occasions where the presence of God was so strong that people fell over like dead men, but to experience it for yourself. This is something that is completely different from anything that I've ever felt in my life. And, and, and for those of you who've been with us for the past three years and, and have seen the manifestation of God's presence, um, this is unlike anything that I've ever experienced in my life. Like literally my body was weak. I felt like if I moved wrong, I was going to die. And so when she called me up, I, I, I was trying to muster up every ounce of strength that I had to try to stand. And when I was walking, I was literally just walking like, 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 and, and trembling at the same time, just going, going, moving, moving slowly. And, and, and there was times where I had to pause and I had to like catch, catch my, um, my, my balance because I felt like I was going to fall over on my face. And so the, 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 the presence of God was so amazing that, that, that this was, we knew that, that, that God was about to do something amazing. And, and, and we have already received testimonies of, of, of people who were touched. And we, um, I, I don't want to go ahead of, 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 of your vision. So you go ahead and um, I'm about to go into when, when they started dispersing. So you go ahead and, and share what happened after that. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, uh, so right after that, it was, it was just so amazing because I already knew that, that, that as pastor was coming, I already knew that he was not, something was happening. I know that the heaviness or, uh, you know what it feels like? I tell you exactly what it feels like. It feels like uh, it, it, everything, everything inside of you is being emptied out. It, 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 it feels like it feels uh, 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 the power of God comes so strong that it, it's truly words that you cannot explain. Yeah. Um, but there's a, a, a weight upon you and it's not a bad weight. It's a no. good weight. It's that reverence, respect, honor. Yes, yes. That's what it is. It's like you come into this complete reverence to God. And as you can see that on the live, I start to put my hands up and I start to get on my knees. Well, I already could not. I the, Oh, my gosh. The power of God was so. And when I see the glory of God and when I seen his angels and then when I heard him say one by one, one by one. My God, he's talking to us, people. One by one, he is dispatching his angels yeah. one by one. I've never seen this before. And there's something, there's, I tell you, there's something that I will never do is lie, especially saying something that God said. I will never, ever lie and say God said something, as many people does, and, that, and God didn't do it. Right. So I tell you this, all under God, what everything, when God said one by one, I seen from the left to the right, I seen these angels 
being dispatched, but the wings just opened up, got ready to fly. And as soon as one wings got up or got ready to fly, he, he, he lifted off the ground and boom, he vanished. Other one lifted off the ground and boom, he vanished. And, they, and all of a sudden, they were no longer in front of me, but the glory cloud was so, so, so thick. You know what is amazing is that that was an open vision. That's what it was. It was an open vision. And you know what is amazing? It's, it's, it's amazing uh, 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 to, to know that, listen, God will speak to you in ways that you never even would even would never even imagine. Okay, so I wanted to share this with you. And for those who never see the live yet, go back to it and let the word of God speak to you. Now, there is healings that God had spoken on here. I have received uh, uh, um, confirmation of those who have received healing on here on the live. It, listen, this is not me, guys. And this is what I want. We want to share with you guys tonight. The presence of God comes in two ways, okay? And and I I, I tell you, uh, we have to make sure that we're we are receiving the word of God. And I tell you, when you when 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 God is speaking something on the on the live, or if you're listening to something or reading something, and and it is a direct. If God said, I'm speaking to someone. Um, and someone's eyes is going to be open right now. They had cataracts. Listen, don't wait for another person to receive that healing. Let me tell you, <coughs> God is going to heal you right. as well. Yes. You have to activate that healing. And you have to say, Lord, that word was for me. It was from you, God. It was for me, God. And Lord, I receive your healing. Yes. But you know what? Many times we come to a place... <coughs> Excuse me, my voice just came back yesterday and actually uh, it's coming back this morning. So excuse me, I'm going to be coughing. <laughs> but let me tell you, so many times we wait, we wait for God to shake us up and say, listen, I'm trying to heal you. Right. I'm trying to speak to you. This is what you have to do. There is a condition and this is what I will well, have to, this is what I want you to do. But listen, so many times we come to this place where we're waiting and we're saying, well, God's not healing me. God's not healing. And I'm just going to wait. Oh, I heard something. Okay. I heard that. the I heard that uh, someone's back is being healed right now, but I have pain. No, cannot be me. No, you activate that healing. You activate that healing. Even if you feel the pain, you activate that healing. Yeah. Even if you're taking medicine. Yes, my God. Even if you're taking medication, you activate that healing. Yes. Why? Because you are bringing the presence of, oh my God, you yes, are you bringing are yes. the presence of, oh, the presence of God makes all the okay. difference, people. And what you're doing is, Father, I am activating your word. When you yes. are activating his word, that's the presence of God. You're saying, Lord, I am believing. Lord, I know this is for me. Even if I'm going through this, even if I'm waiting, yes. I'm, the healing is mine. So I'm activating it. And listen, I'm telling you this. You have to activate your faith. Yes. You have to activate your faith. Faith Oh my gosh, I oh I mean Go gosh, I don't even want to Go sit ahead. down right now. I don't want to sit down. So I, listen, <laughs> listen, you have to activate your faith. And how you activate what what is faith? What is faith? Faith is uh um the the uh, I know faith, I, 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 faith I, I, is a, yeah, you, yeah I, I, I know I I know substance, of uh, things hope for faith. evidence things not seen evidence of things not seen the the the, the I'm saying it wrong. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for and the evidence things that you, have not, things you have not seen. This is, and and yes, I know you oh know God. that scripture. We say it all the time, uh, but I caught you off guard. It's okay. But listen, right. this is the thing. Faith oh, is a thing that you have not seen yet. That's what faith is. It's, listen, did you see God face to face? But we know through faith, oh my gosh, that he is alive and he's real. I, I just told someone... Uh, 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 on uh, on the phone last night that you don't have to worry about listening to another person tell you what your God is not. Sometimes we That's get right. to this. You, you don't have what you, your, my God, your testimony 
is oh my like go ahead, hold on go ahead. your testimony is Crazy. what oh my gosh they were knowing by the word of the lamb and the blood of the lamb and the words of your testimony yes. you have to stand by your testimony what did god do for you how did he heal you? How did he deliver you? How did he save your family? Did he? Did he not? Did yeah. he provide for you? Did he do? And you have to keep that testimony alive so that another person that comes in that says that your God ain't real, you're able to say, I am sorry, but my God is real because this is what he's done. Not that's for right. another person, that's but right. I have my personal testimony and that's what's important is that we have a personal testimony so that we can share what god has done listen this is the in these last days there's going to be people that will come against you that's and right. they will come and to deceive you to take you away from your god no you stand on who you know yeah. and what you know about your god and you stand firm because god is always showing us exactly himself yeah all things are possible to my them god that believe mm. so it is applied through faith yes faith is what gives us access into it's impossible to please god without faith we are called faith in action but as faith even, even as even as faith in action we have to put our our, our, our we have to activate our faith and it's important <laughs> to understand this is this is what this is what um this is what jesus said he says, have faith in God. Now, a lot of times we see this in, in, in Mark 11. He says, have faith in God. And, and we're thinking, okay, well, have faith in God. The actual um, Greek, when it's broken down, it says, have God kind of faith. What kind of faith does God have? He says, he speaks it and he believes it happens. Oh, yes. God, when God speaks, it's synonymous with his, with, with, with his confidence that what he spoke will happen. So we have to have faith like that. And Jesus said, when you have God faith, when you have faith like God, like how he speaks things into being and it happens, you can speak to the mountain. Yes. So faith activates power. Yes, yes. And when you activate it, when you when you say, see, that's what confession is. This is the power of confession. We think that confession is all about is all about confessing. Well, I did this wrong. I did that wrong. It has nothing to do with trying to name off things. It is about coming to agreement with God. Yes. When you confess with your mouth that what God said in His Word is yes. truth. That faith is activated and it will happen. He said, you will speak to the mountain. You will speak to it. Yes. It doesn't say ask God to remove it. It says you speak to it. So when you have faith like God, you will speak to whatever standing in front of you, command it to be moved. And the Bible, and Jesus said that it will obey you. Yes. But it's activated through faith. Yes. It's activated through faith. So anytime a word is coming across, especially in this season and, and in this day and age, we have to have the faith. To receive it, say, God, let it be unto me, as you have said. I mean, that's what Mary said. When Gabriel came to her, he said, you are favored, woman. You, you will bear a child in this. She said, be it unto me, as you have spoken it. And boom, the, the Holy Spirit came upon her, and she was able to birth the Lord Jesus. The same happens with our faith. When we hear the word of God, and we, and we say, Lord, be it unto me as you have said. You activate that faith. Yes. You activate that promise, and it becomes yours. And God, and oh God, this is where you will. This is where you take hold of things. You're able to combat things. You're able to overcome things. You're able to take hold of the promises of God through faith. Yes. Amen. Amen. My God. I, I had a scripture. Uh huh. Um, what we, scripture? Tell should me. We, should we go there real quick? Okay, so this is this is this is My what God. this is what I wanted to speak to us real fast because I we, we oh man I I can stay here right here, um and I only have like fifteen minutes left with you guys, um, but um we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about two things really quick why the presence of God is so so vital in our lives and why why we need the presence of God okay this is so uh it's so important that we understand. Uh, why we cannot just pray just to pray, right. why we cannot just read our Bible just to read our Bible or go to go to a, a sanctuary or the house of God just to go there. You know, we're, we, we are the church, as every one of you know, we are the body of Christ. And so we have to understand that there's two things that happens when it comes to the presence of God. We already know that God is omnipresent. Right. 
Uh, everyone knows that, that, that God is omnipresent, that, that God is an everywhere type of God, that, that, that there is no limits to the knowledge of God, or right. there is no limits to the power uh, right. of God, and there is no limits to, to the extension as to where he goes. He can go everywhere. He can go everywhere and anywhere. And the amazing part about God is that he, he has the ability to be everywhere all at once, all at the same time. All at the same time. And so we have a God that is omnipresent. Okay. Uh, so I need you to, to get this really quick. Cause I'm going to, we're going to do this really quick so that we're not wasting your time or taking your much of your time. But in Matthew chapter 18, 20, it talks about how God is there with us all. And so it says uh, in Matthew 18, 20, it says where two or three are gathered together yeah. in my name, which is his yeah. name, their I, which is God, and in their midst. So yeah. they are amongst you. They are amongst. He's amongst us. Uh, he can be with us and he can be with your family member at the same time. And he can be with that woman in the hospital at the same time. Right. God, his, 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 uh, his presence is not limited. He's everywhere. Okay. So yeah. Pastor, I want you to explain that really quick on that. Um, yeah. Really quickly bringing this into, into where we've been talking about uh, recently about the power of prayer. This is the power of prayer. Yes. You see, even with the enemy, the enemy cannot be in two separate places at the same time, but God can be everywhere. And so the power <laughs> of prayer comes in where we are speaking something um, in, in, in one area, but because the presence of God is everywhere, he's able to touch that person that you're praying, that you're lifting up in prayer at the very moment that you're speaking it. And there's many, many testimonies about this, but omnipresence, omnipresence, yes. the word omni actually yes. means all. And presence means about, you know, their pre presence or to be, Present. So we know that it means that God is everywhere or he has pre he's present in all places. Now, this is important because we know that, that God is, is everywhere at all times. And, and, and I want to read some scripture to you coming from Jeremiah 23 and 24 uh, from the NLT version. It says this, can anyone hide from me in a secret place? Meaning even if you were to try to lock yourself uh, in, 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 in the most hidden uh, place, God would still know that you're there, which is comforting as well, because when we're like nobody knows where we are, we can know that God does. Amen. So we know that can anyone hide from from me in a secret place? Um, he says, am I not everywhere in all the heavens and the earth? So this is telling us that God is everywhere. Psalms 139 and 7 says, I, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to the heaven, you're there. If I go down to the grave, you're there too. If I ride the wings of the morning and if I dwell in the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. And then also in Proverbs 15 and 3, it says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 says, And no creature is hidden from his sight. But all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. And so it's important for us to understand that God is everywhere. And now, now there is a difference. And, and I want you to understand that, that what we're talking about, we did talk about um, to the level of, of saying of how we felt. And if, if, if we moved that, that it felt like we were going to die. We're not trying to scare you or cause you to think like, oh, man, if I go to church, um, when, when they reopen the church, am I going to fall dead? That's not what we're trying to say. What we have to understand is there is a certain level of respect and fear that we must carry for God. If we're to come into his presence, we don't just walk up in there as though we, we can just walk into on, on anybody. Can I tell you, he's not just a man upstairs. He's not just somebody that we should talk about as though he is nothing. He is almighty God and, and he is worthy of all glory, worthy of all honor and worthy of our highest, highest respect. And so this is important. That's why that's why the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge or the beginning of knowing God, because you will not get to know God or you will not truly come to know God until you know how to fear and respect him. And so it's important for us to, under, um, to, 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 to understand this. And, 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 and in, in coming into this, we got to understand also that there is there is such a thing on the flip side 
of, of his omnipresence is also where he comes in in a measure of his glory. Now, I know that there's a lot of uh, theologians out there that that, that can uh, will disagree on this or will say, you know, well, if the Shekinah glory comes in, um, that, that, that everybody will fall dead. Is God, is God not mighty enough, okay, and in control of his own presence that he can allow a touch of him? Or a little of him, a measure of him. When 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 I when I when we were studying this, this is one of the, the, the words that the Lord said, I will place a measure of my presence. That that are, that that literally uh if uh, now we know that if 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 flesh were to come into his his um his his, his highest presence, that that all no flesh can can live in his presence, in his Shekinah, okay? Or in his Shekinah is, is a word that uh that um means his weighty presence it talks about his his glory um it, it is his kabad um the kabad is 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 the actual hebrew uh, of this and it was changed by the romans to shakina and and then later on it was translated into shakina and and you know even if, i mean even if you look into this uh um people of course take take things uh and and turn them into all, all kinds of things but um just just understand what we're trying to talk about is this is the weighty presence of God and God can come in in any measure that he chooses fit to come in and so what we got to understand is is this is where um yes God's presence is everywhere but then there is manifestations of God's presence where he literally will come in and and many times we we try to we mistake it for the big things the big things the big things but if you remember Elijah and we were talking about Elijah in the power of prayer um when 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 God brought him into um to when, when he actually ran to the mountain of God, and he was there in the presence of God. God told him, you know what, Elijah, go out on the mountain. I want to show you something. And the earthquake came, but he said, well, God, your presence wasn't in that. It says God was not in that. Then the whirlwind came. And, and, and even with all of that, that power that was being manifested, he said, but God's presence was not even in that. And then and then uh, 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 the, the, the fire came in, or the lightning came in, and, and literally he said, well, but your presence was in that. And then God spoke with a still we, we, we hear of the still small voice or as the, the hebrew teaches the dachol which is the daughter's voice god spoke with a very small voice and literally elijah had to cover his face because the presence of god was in a small measure of his of, of his glory came into there and elijah re, uh, understood that it was in god's presence now here's what i want to bring out here is the bible says god now now it talks about god's omnipresence and 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 many of us say well um, God's presence is 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 um, everywhere, but also um, the the in in Second Corinthians three and sixteen it says, but wherever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now now the veil talks about the 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 separation between us and and the presence of God, but it says this for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Now here's the thing though we say we 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 just classified that God's presence is everywhere. He his presence is everywhere, but then. If, if this scripture says that that God, wherever the, the presence or, or where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. I got a question for you. Is freedom everywhere? Well, not in some some hospitals. There's not freedom there. It, it, it's freedom. Um, I mean, right now there's no bars open. Thank God for that. But but um, the, the, there was no freedom in bars. I mean, there's no freedom in, in, in many places because the key that we got to understand is it says where the spirit of the Lord is. So when God is reverence, and this is where we're talking about this, this honoring God and having a fear of God and respecting God. When God is respected as owner and Lord, there will be freedom. Amen. Amen. So uh, that's the first one. So God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. Um, and uh, um, and I like that scripture that you brought up, Pastor, yes. that uh, where the spirit of the Lord is, and that's the presence of the Lord. The presence yes. is the spirit of God. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost. Some of you referring to, to the Holy Ghost. It's the Spirit of God. So yes. that's what his presence is. is he's the Spirit of God. Um, so the Lord comes in amongst us. Yes. And, and the, the word that you just spoke right now uh, was whenever, uh, whenever you're in the presence of God, there is freedom. Yes. And it's so important that we understand, but you got to get into the presence. Yes. And you got, you have to, you know, it's, it's, you, you can't, we, sometimes we feel like, Sometimes we get to this space where, well, God's going to follow me wherever I'm going to go to. God don't have to, God's not going to follow you wherever you go to. And this is the thing that we got to understand is this is where reverence comes in and respect and honor. This is where all these things comes in. We have to, 
we are uh, uh, with God. Oh, thank you, Father. When, 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 when he was in the garden, when they were in the garden of Eden, when Eve and Adam was in the garden of Eden, Eden is what? Eden is his what? Presence. presence. presence it's the yes. presence of God. And when he, they were in the garden of Eden, the whole reason why they were, the, they were created is to be with him. They were amongst him. He was there. Right. He was there with, with them both. But there was something that had happened. Well, we all know the story and sin had happened that disconnected the presence of God. And so now, yes, God was amongst, but now the second part that I want to get into is where God is wanting us all to be in is now the presence of God cannot just be amongst you. Uh, to, you know, you go into a church service and the presence of God is there because somebody brought the presence of God there because that person had abided in God and they brought the presence of God. And now you get to, to, to bask in the in that the, the sacrifice of that other person bringing in the spirit of God inside right. and now you get to enjoy the presence of God that's being amongst you but this is where God is wanting us now he's saying I'm not here just for be amongst you because one of the things that we got to understand is we were created or Adam and Eve was created from the beginning to fellowship and commune with the father. Yes. They were not created to be distant. Yes. They were not created to be selfish. They were not created to be all about themselves as man and woman or husband and wife, but they were created to walk in union with God. Thank you, Lord. They were created to walk in union with God. And so this is the thing that God is wanting to teach us folks. I tell you this, this will change your life because many of us are saying, Father, you are omnipresent. I hear ministers say that. I hear, I hear leaders saying that. I tell you this, I hear people that say that they're, they're in Christ say that. I hear people, I hear people say that and they're saying, oh, you know what? Well, my God is omnipresent and there, he's there whenever I need him. You're absolutely right. He's there whenever you need him. But one of the things that separates that, that is so important for us to understand is, yes, he's there for us um, and, and he's there amongst us. He surrounds us. His presence surrounds us. But he's not only looking for just to be amongst you. He's not looking to just stand by and wait till you need him. He's not looking to just stand by and wait till you say, Father, I love you. You know what God is looking for? In the word in John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. For my father, listen to what I'm saying. For my father will love them and we will, we, and we, my God, we will come and make our home oh we he will come we will come and make our home with each of them who's the each of them well each of them who loves him and do the will oh my god and do the will of my father that's exactly what god is saying he's saying i'm not i'm not here just to be amongst you and just to be your your sidekick He's not here to just be a sidekick or somebody that you need in a midnight hour because nobody's answering their phone. He's here because you, uh, he needs to be here because you want him in your life. And he's saying, listen, when you, when, when you uh, uh, do what I say, my right. father and I will come to you and we will abide. Oh, well, people, people say, often say, well, I love God. And, and look, um, if, if you look at what it says, it says, all who love me, will do what I say. This is the key. So loving God is not just merely having a, a, a thought of, well, God, I love you. He's, you're, 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 this is bringing it into action again, is that your love has to manifest itself in action by doing and in obedience to God to make sure, and this is where he says that if you are living in obedience to me, then that's what shows me that you truly love me. And if you truly love me, I'm able to come inside of you and make my house and live inside and this, of you. This is yeah. a thing that God is trying to say to us. He's not just wanting to for you for him to just be around you. Yeah. He he's wanting for him to be inside of you. 
That's what he's wanting. And, 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 and the more you seek the face of God, the more you die to sin, the more you die to yourself, the more you remove pride, the more you fall in love with your father, the closer you get to God. And I'm telling you, like the word yeah. says, draw near to me. He yeah. says that first. He did not say that he's going to come to you first. He says you come to him. And so the Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, he says, don't you understand? Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the spirit of God lives in you? Yes. I'm telling you, listen, then it says, God will destroy anyone who destroys his temple. For God's temple is holy and you are that holy temple temple now i'm gonna close right here if i may uh if i can just a few minutes listen this is what i'm wanting you to understand is that god is wanting us to be he's wanting us uh to he's want. let me say this this way he's wanting to be in us and so many times we take this and we say, well, Father, you're, you're around us. We just, you know, I know you're here. I know you're here. The fact of the matter is, is, the question is to you, is do you really know that he's here? Because when someone, when the Father, thank you, Holy Spirit, when the Father lives inside of someone, when the Father lives inside of you, you're confident to know that he is here. That's what it is. You're confident to know that he is here. And if he's here, you know that he is amongst you. You know that you are carrying the spirit of God, that wherever you go and wherever you go, whether it be to the store or, or whether you be to a family's house, and because you carry the spirit of God inside of you, which you are the temple of God, yeah. you carry the spirit, people will know Oh my gosh, that there's something different. And let me tell you, when you carry the spirit of God, you bring his presence wherever you're at. That's right. Anywhere you're at, you can bring the presence of God, whether nobody believes or not. You can bring in the presence of God. Let me tell you this, and I'm almost closing. I had to go in and pray for people that was Buddhist. And I prayed for people that was different religions that did not believe in the in God, that did not believe in the presence of God. And we had to go and pray for people. I tell you, people who does not believe in God, we had to pray for people. But I tell you this, the moment you step in, why? Because it's not you. You're not the reason yes. why. It's because the presence of God that you is inside you. of you. Yeah. What God says, abide in me yes. and I will abide in you. Yes. I will come and make my home inside of you. You are the temple. And this is what God is saying to us. Wherever you are at, you can make a difference. Yes. Why? It's nothing to do with you but you being an open, pleasing vessel that is a living sacrifice to our king yes. and a vessel that is pure and holy. Yes. And I tell you this, you can make a difference wherever you are at. That's the reason why we can come in confidence. It's not cockiness. It's not, it's not um, not being humble. Arrogance, it's not pride. Yeah. It's not arrogant. When you know, you know, yes. nobody can tell you different nobody can tell you something else yes. it does not matter what you know you know and when you know it no one can take you off and sweep you off your feet it's like that person who is on a solid foundation the winds may come and the waves may come but they continue to keep on standing why is that it's because they have abided in god yes. and god with them that is what God is telling us. And that is what happened on Sunday when the spirit of God manifested himself in that sanctuary. And I've heard so many, uh, we've heard so many awesome testimonies really of the spirit them, yes. of God dealing with people right where they at that they could not stop crying and i'm telling you this if you say well pastor i could not feel nothing i i tell you you get along with god and ask god yes. what is hindering you from his spirit because his spirit is going to speak his spirit is going to move his spirit is going to heal his spirit is going to comfort his spirit is going to break through waves like this right. 
airwaves. It has nothing to do with the churches and their religion and our every one of our religion. It has nothing to do with that. It is a personal relationship with the Father. So saying all that to say this, saints of God, the presence of God is the difference. Thank you, my king. The Lord told me in the beginning of this pandemic, and I'm getting ready to close. My gosh, the time passed by so fast. But the Lord told me in the beginning of this pandemic, as I begin to pray Psalms 91, and in the middle of the prayer, when it says a thousand may fall at our side, and though 10,000 will fall and die around us, The Bible says these evils will not touch you. And immediately, what did I hear? You remember what I heard? Immediately, I said, I heard the Lord said, I am the cure. Immediately, the Lord said, I am the cure. And I tell you this. I ended up speaking after that, and I said, This pandemic will not stop unless the people of God get it straight, get their act together, get back to God. But this pandemic will not stop because he is the cure for this pandemic, not this vaccine. This vaccine has nothing to do with it. And I'm telling you this, this vaccine that's coming, we got to be careful. But I tell you this, I'm not going to even talk about that. I'm not going to open up a whole can of worms. We'll talk about that later on. But I tell you this, when when God said, I am the cure, I am the cure, I began to weep. And that is when the Lord said, if you have been given one moment, one moment, one Mm -hmm. moment that you can say what um, you can minister to the world, what would that word be? What word? What word would that be? What would I say to say to the whole world if I was given a one moment and one chance to change the life of God's people? And I tell you that word was repentance. I tell you this, God is looking. And as as I shared a few weeks ago, when God woke me up, when God spoke to me, during a prayer that he says, I am, I am searching the hearts of my people. I am searching the hearts of man. I'm moving faster than the eyes can see and quicker than the minds can imagine. I tell you this, this is what God is saying right now to his people. And that's, guess what? He is knocking on every doorstep. He's knocking on every heart. He's knocking on every person's life. He's removing things that does not belong in his temple. And that is what God is doing. And I tell you, his presence, the presence of God, when you go back to the presence of God, when you begin to seek his face and change the atmosphere around you and want to really want, Lord, I want you to abide, not just words. I told somebody, you, it's, it, it, it cannot just, it's not words in action. It's not words in action. When you just open up your mouth and say, Lord, I love you. No, we got to put our love in action yes. and our faith in action yes. and the word uh, of God in action. Uh, and when we do that, uh, and I'll tell you this, we will see healing and we will see deliverance and we will see, listen, we will see lives change and we and we will see Uh, this pandemic, let me tell you this, people, and I I, I close with this. I just can't stop talking. I'll close with this. Let me share this with you. The Lord told me from the very beginning of this pandemic before it hit the United States, he started to speaking, he started speaking to me these things and and what I have to do to prepare and how do I prepare the people. And I mean, he was just continuing to speak. Everything that God spoke had already happened. And, and there is more that's coming that is happening. But I tell you this, his presence is where you need to be. His presence is where you need to be. So many of us are living our lives lonely and in and, and the same old, same old, the same chaos. 
the same chaotic life. You don't have to be there. His presence is what breaks things. His presence is what heals and restores. His presence is where it needs to be. And not just amongst you, not just on this life where you can feel his presence. And I tell you this, I know God. I'm confident that God is touching you. You don't have to say it on the line. I am confident that God is touching you. I'm confident that this life is reaching the world. Yeah. I am confident. I am confident. Why? Because let me tell you, when you know God and when you know your life and how you're living and how you have to align with God, I'm not saying we're perfect, but I tell you this, we strive to be in perfection or we strive to be in holiness. And that I can tell you. And let me tell you this, that's the reason why you are seeing or you are experiencing the presence of God. God can work through your telephone. When you're talking to your people, when you're talking to your friends and family and, and, and they're sharing something and you're there, you don't need to call up your pastor. You don't need to call up your friend. You don't need to call up a spiritual leader. God is in you. If you are seeking after him and you are in his word, he's in you. All you got to do is open your mouth and the spirit of God is going to speak. So this is what I want to say. And we end right here. Because I tell you, we can go another hour. But I end right here. God is yearning for you to abide in him. He is yearning for you to just, oh, just open up your heart and say, Lord, I need you. He's yearning. He's yearning for that. He's wanting you. He's wanting to, to hold you close. He's wanting you to, he's wanting to love on you. And he's wanting to just show you everything that he has for you. But you have to open up your heart. And you have to come in communion with God and say, Lord, I want only you. I want a fellowship with you. I want to break bread with you. And this is what God is wanting. I tell you people. You will see change. That I promise. You will see change in your life if you do that. Yes, he does. is wanting not to just be in your home or not to just be at your job site and he's standing outside the door. He's not wanting just that. He's wanting to be inside of you. He wants to fellowship with you. He loves you so much. And this is the reason why he said, listen, I need... Me, Jesus said, if you do the will of my father, me and me and, and our father will, will come, will come and will come and dwell inside of you. This is what God is wanting. And this is something that we all need to take into consideration that God is wanting to speak and he's wanting to talk with you. Listen, you need to talk to somebody before you go to bed. Just go ahead, open up your mouth and just talk to the father. Just talk to the father and just say, father, Wow, what, a, what an awesome day it was, Father. I thank you for, for blessing us. And I thank you for your presence. And Lord, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your rest that you, get, that you give. You, you'll find yourself when you're talking to someone, he'll interrupt and all of a sudden, God will, God will speak to you and you'll be like, oh my gosh, this just came to my mind. It didn't, it's not just something that came to your mind. It's the spirit of God that just spoke to you. And so we have to get back to the presence of God. So that he can manifest himself yes. inside of us, inside of you. Amen? Amen. So we are declaring that God is amongst you, but we are declaring that God be inside of you. Amen? We are so thankful for this opportunity to come on this live. To come on this live tomorrow night, Pastor Jeremy is going to minister the word um, at 7 o'clock. Yes. But we are so grateful. Listen, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm, I, 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 am, I am so done. This is a minister's probably 10th ending. I tell you this, we love every one of you. And I, I tell you this, we pray for every one of you. Every one of you. We pray for everyone that comes on the live. And your extended families and friends. We pray a covering. Because you know why? We know our Father. And we're confident that he will do exactly what he wills to do. And so we pray a blessing over you and over your families. May God bless you. Yes. May his spirit be with you. May you find, uh, may he favor you and give you peace, give you rest, give you 
healing yes, in the name of Jesus. Name Father of God, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word and yes, we praise God. you. We honor you, my God. We love you so much, Father God, Lord. And we are so grateful, Father God, to be your vessels. Every yes, one God. of us are called to be your vessels, yes, God. God. And we're so grateful that you have used us, Father God, in this hour and in this time. Now I ask for strength. I ask for healing. I ask for peace. And Lord, I ask that your presence, most of all, will live inside of us. My God, be our mouth. Use our mouth. Use our eyes and our ears and our thoughts, God, for your will and your will only. My King, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I know that there has been many people on top here that has been reading and seeking the face of God. I gave you guys a, I gave you guys a challenge to do. I pray to God you guys did it. Um, it was a 15-minute challenge. Um, so how many of you are ready for one more challenge? If you're ready, I want you to say, Pastor, I'm ready, or I'm ready. I want you to say it real quick, and we're going to close this live right now. But how many of you are ready for this next challenge? If you're ready, say yes, 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 yes. Say yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, thank you, 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 thank you. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. All right. So last week we gave you a 15 minute challenge, and that 15 minute challenge was to seek the face of God every day for seven days. A 15 minute challenge. And what I said was, I want you to open up the word. I want you, you can go ahead and do praise and worship. You can worship the Father, whatever it is that the Father is wanting you to do, or whatever it is that you're wanting to do. Amen. Whatever it is that you're wanting to do. And uh, I, I said for you to pray, to seek the face of God, to get into his word, and to um, be in the presence of God and seek his face for 15 minutes. So if you're ready, I'm ready. And we're ready. We're ready. We want to extend this for 25 minutes. Why I'm not saying 30? Well, a lot of times when we see the word 30, we'll think of it as being long. And it's not long at all. You'll find yourself to be in the presence of God longer than that. But I want to challenge you for 25 minutes to get into fellowship with our Father. And for 25 minutes, whether it be through worship for 10 minutes and then you're getting into the presence and just basking in his presence just for 25 minutes. You can do it with your family. You can do it on loan. Um, but whatever it is, for 25 minutes every single day, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to say, Father, your presence is all I need. This is what I want you to do. And now I want you to listen because God is going to start speaking. He's going to be tearing down things. Thank you, Father. He's going to be tearing down things that does not belong. You guys got to get ready for it. All right. Whenever you see something surface of all of a sudden, a thought came in your mind that you just, uh, the Lord just healed you from. And a thought came into to your mind to say, hey, it's okay to go back there. Cancel that in the name of Jesus, because the enemy is going to put thoughts in your mind. But you're going to cancel it because the power of God and the presence of God is stronger than anything. And he's stronger than the enemy. And the enemy has no hold over that. So what I want you to do is say, Father, I need your presence. I need your presence. And, and when you say that, I tell you this, watch and watch the Lord begin to break things off of you. Begin to break changes. Some of you who are dealing with anger, he's going to break that off of you. Some of you have been dealing with selfishness, this I mentality. He's going to break it off of you. And I, I'll tell you this, surrender it to the Lord, lift it up, give it to him and say, Father, no more. No more will I live this lifestyle. No more will I do this. I tell you this, for 25 minutes, I want you to do this challenge for seven days. When we come back on, on the on next week, on next week, Tuesday, God, I know that God is going to change you from the inside out. I am, in fact, we yes. are confident, confident in the Father that He will change you from glory to glory. Amen. So His presence is all that you need. I need you more, Father God, and get into His Word for 25 minutes. We would like to just lift up some people and just say hi, Sister Tara, Sister Tiana. God bless you. We see you guys on top of here, Brother Corey. Uh, Sister Kel, um, 
Lois, God bless you. Need prayer that I can sing yeah. for the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lois, we speak to your voice right now. Need prayer that I can sing for the Lord. We speak to your voice right now. We speak to your heart right now. The Lord just said to let your heart sing. Let your heart sing unto the Lord. He just spoke that to me right now. Let your heart sing to the Lord. And I tell you this, the best way that a song can happen is from the abundance of your heart. So in the name of Jesus, we speak to your heart and we speak to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we speak that you are able to worship and sing to the Lord in the name of Jesus. God bless you, my dear. For Sister Carmen, Elder Daisha, Sister Malia, God bless you. And to Renee, Brother Brian, God bless you. Yes, thank you so much for coming on. Please share, Sister Bridget. Sister Carmen, God bless you. Mama Gloria, we love you. God bless you. Mama May, God bless you. Uh, 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 Sister Tahani, Sister Miley, God bless you. Every one of you, Brother Matthew, God bless you. Um, please share this way. Brother Ray, we love you. God bless you. Sister Abby from Texas, we love you. God bless you. And God bless our brother as well in the name of Jesus. Thank you. That, that God bless you, Aisha. God bless you in the name of Jesus. And Angie, God bless you. Every one of you, God bless you. Sister Leah, God bless you. Every one of you, God bless you. Thank you so much for being on the live. We look forward to seeing you again this week, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday at 7 and Sunday at 1030. We love every one of you. God bless you. Go forward in the Lord, in the fear of the Lord. and by the power of his, of his grace. grace. God bless every God bless one of you. All. Please message us if we need. If you need us, we're, we're, we're not ending. Please message us. We love every one of you. God bless you. God bless